Hello guys, welcome back to the 7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily 7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the normal stresses. In this lecture, we are going to find the normal stresses created inside the object with the different cross section. You see here, this one is a smart cylinder and one is a big cylinder. And these both cylinders are subjected to any force P and there are some stresses created inside this object with the different cross sections. So the smaller cross section will also carry some normal stresses and the big cross section will also take some normal stresses. But how they will affect it because of their geometry. One has smaller geometry and the other one has larger geometry. So due to their change in the geometry, there will be difference in their stresses. So in this lecture, we are focused to find the normal stresses of the different cross section of the same object. As we know that if I consider this any object and this object is subjected to any force F and this force is acting perpendicular to this object making a 90 degree here with this object so we call that this force will create some stresses inside this object and we call these stresses are the normal stresses because the force is perpendicular to the area. Similarly, to create the stresses inside the object this force P is acting perpendicular to this cross section of the cylinder. So there are two cylinders given to us. One is the represented by R1, so this is the first cylinder, the smaller cylinder, and the second one is the bigger cylinder, which is the represented by 2. So you see here the R2 is 40 mm and these both are subjected to the load of 100 kN. This one also is 100 kN. So due to this tension force there will be some stresses created and this shape will be elongated along its length. So how to find the stresses in the first cross section and then on the second cross section. So stress 1 will be equal to the P divided by A1 and stress 2 which is in the second cross section this 2 will be the P divided by A2. I wrote it here P and P because the force, the same force is acting on this object but with the different cross section so A1 and A2. Now the load is 100 kN and the area A1. So first I have to find the area A1. A1 is equal to the pi r square. Is there a, this is in circular shape so we can find the area by this method by plugging the value of r 20 square millimeter pi into r is 20 so we get this value of 1256.6 square millimeter similarly a2 pi r square and this is r2 and r2 is 40 which is the double of this r1 so pi into 40 square it comes out to be 7853.9 square millimeter. So now plugging the A1 area here which is 1256.6 and sigma 2 will be P is 100 kN is the same and the area is 7853 for this larger cross section so 7853.9. This is in kN the force the area is in square millimeter. This is in kN the area is in square millimeter. So sigma 1 comes out to be 0.0795 kN per square millimeter. Sigma 2 comes out to be 0.0127 kN per square millimeter. So to convert into megapascal, which is the most common use of the stress, so most common use unit of the stress, so kN can be transferred into Newton. So multiplying this value by 1000 because 1 kN is equal to because 1 kN is equal to 1000 newton. So I just multiply this kN with 1000 so it becomes newton and it will be millimeter square. Similarly here multiplying this kN with 1000 so it will change to newton. 0 0.0127 multiplying it with 1000. So it will become Newton per square millimeter. Sigma 1 comes out to be 79 megapascal because 
the unit of the Newton per square millimeter because one Newton per square millimeter is equal to the one megapascal. So I can write it here that this unit is equal to the megapascal. So it is 179 megapascal and sigma 2 is 12.7 megapascal. So now there is a big difference between the stresses of these two cross section of the same object. The sigma 1 comes out to be 79. The stresses here in this object comes out to be 79 megapascal. While the stresses in the second cross section of the object is 12.7 megapascal. So more stresses create inside this object and this cross section. It is because of the smaller cross section. If the area is small, so it is inversely proportional to the stress. So if area is small, more stress will be created. In this case, in the second shape, in the second cross section of the object, the area is big. The area is more because of the more radius. So area is more. So if area is more, the stresses will be small because it is inversely related to the area. If area is small, so more stresses. If area is big, so less stresses. Hope you guys understand how to find the normal stresses in different cross section of the same object. And don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily seven engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.